Hey everybody, it's Michael Collins again of EnviroReporter.com. Uh, this is our third and final uh, video for August 11th, 2011, and we're checking out HEPA filters. And what's in them? After 23 days of pulling gooey air out of the, uh, gooey dirt out of the air. Actually, not dirt, fallout. So what you're looking at is our other HEPA filter at Radiation Station, which is a Kenmore Air Cleaner Plasma Wave. Real happy with this unit, just like the Honeywell. Get them right off the shelf at Sears. And so what we did, we did a spot check on this. We took a look inside. We, uh, we were filming it. It got boring because we couldn't really pick anything up in a spot check very easily. So we vacuumed all this right here and uh, vacuumed the HEPA filter underneath and then um, uh, went outside with this clean vacuum cleaner with its own HEPA filter, banged out the debris, and what we got is what you see right here. And I'm going to put our newspaper back down, just like we had before. There is our debris. Now, having made sure not to get my hands gooey, I'm going to turn on our inspector. I'm going to turn it on with the noise, meaning the chirping. And then we're going to make it do this for 10 minutes, just like that. And I'm going to. There she goes. Do this long enough, you could sort of get a telltale sign. How something, if it's hot or not. Now, just judging from our last HEPA filter debris, one would think. But there's only one way to find out, and that's to do what we're doing. Just take a 10 minute average. Sure, you could take a 24 minute average, I mean, 24 hour average. You could average till the cows come home. But a 10 minute average ought to do it. And our previous background in here was 35.8, as we discussed before. It gets a little tedious watching 10 minute averages, in my opinion. However, it does give me a chance to talk to you between major articles and major posts and blog posts. I know I've been getting asked a lot about what happened to the Toxies 2011 second annual Bad Actor Chemicals photo gallery with our favorite perchlorate, that toxic rocket fuel oxidizer with her uh, getting on stage in Hollywood at the Egyptian Theater, getting big awards. Uh, well, those are going to be coming right soon. There's a more lighthearted uh, take on contamination, all chemical. Perchlorate has won a couple of years in a row now in a couple of categories. If you uh, go on to uh, EnviroReporter.com, you can see the first annual Toxies. That's, uh, T-O-X-I-E-S and if you go to Toxies.com you'll see it. You'll even see your uh, interview. But the second batch of photos are really, really good and we'll get those up soon. You know one of the reasons I show you these averages? It's because I'm proving it to you. It's part of the scientific method. It's what's called empirical thought. Prove it. Now what you have now, out of your government, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, which is in charge of your 104 nuclear reactor complexes around the country, and the Environmental Protection Agency, is you've got a wish type of philosophy, which goes something like this. There's no way radiation can get to the United States from Japan, from these meltdowns. Or if it does, it's in such tiny amounts, it'll never affect you. That's called wishful thinking. That's the kind of thing they used to do in Europe 
pre-Renaissance. But now we're having a renaissance of wishful thinking and non-empirical thought. We even have a presidential candidate, as I understand it, who actually thinks that all this science is the problem. Well, I don't come from that school. I come from a school where you prove what you posit. If you can. I don't know what the uh, readings here are going to be on this, this dust that's collected at Radiation Station over the last 23 days. Just 23 days of dust. I know this, that the, the dust collected by that Honeywell HEPA filter over 23 days was 2.3 times hotter than the background in here. Now, where'd that come from? Uh, I can guess. We've done tests on all sorts of things. We've done tests on powdered milk coming in hot. Sure wish it wasn't. That's why we switched to almond milk. You can see what else we switched to by going to our website and looking at Eat Me, the blog post. We can't come around and test for all you folks. Everything you buy to eat, you've got to eat smart. You've got to read the comments on this site. You've got to look at our resources page. And you've got to find out how to protect yourself against the kinds of things that are the most obvious when it comes to radioactive contamination. In the last video I talked about rain and precipitation. Let me talk about something else. Uh, if this dust here is coming in hot, and there hasn't been any precipitation, it's floating in the air. Well, it lands on the ground too, as dust, and you end up tracking it into your house and into your offices. Well, I can tell you this, checking floors in this area, they've come in hot. They've come in hot in Santa Monica, they've come in hot in Burbank, Glendale. Oh, look, we're over background. But remember, we've got to be 15% above background because uh, at least 15% above background for it to be a legitimate uh, reading simply because the inspector's rather conservative margin of error is 15%. So unless it's 15% more than background, we're not going to call it a uh, measurement that we can use with confidence. I think we're getting close to that. The uh, last uh, aggregate total on the Honeywell was 800 or 80 counts per minute. That's, uh, oh, I don't know, 0 0.024, 0 0.028 millirem an hour, approximately, if I don't have my math wrong off the top of my head. So wishful thinking won't wish this stuff away. When you see films that you can get access to on our resources page of rain coming in several times in, in St. Louis at dozens times background, rain being tested by a gentleman going across Canada by himself with like three Geiger counters and good ones and he knows how to use them and it coming in at, well, like over a hundred times Los Angeles is already high background? Or the guy who just took readings in Oklahoma City this last week at night of the first rains they've had in who knows how long they've been uh, enduring a terrible drought his readings, though he didn't do a background, his readings of the rain came in at approximately 140 times Los Angeles's already high background. LA's background is about double what it should be and like I talked about in the last take, maybe it's a function of uh, previous meltdown and the deposition of highly fissile radionuclides uh, throughout uh, LA to slightly bring up the background. I mean to bring it up double that's more than slight but we've had a lot of uh, radiological work done in this area. We also were downwind of the San Luis Obispo area located Diablo Canyon nuclear generating station. But Oklahoma City 140 times over. Colleague of ours with an inspector in North Carolina, high numbers there. 
Now, wishful thinking and attacking science and attacking the EPA, which has dropped this nuclear football, unbelievably, uh, but believably, after my experience uh, with the uh, agency over the last dozen years, uh, while it has some really good people, it's, uh, it is affected by politics. And now you're going to see uh, not only no special testing for Fukushima fallout in the United States that we have shown is here in all sorts of mediums. Look through our statistics, look through our videos, look at other sites, the very few sites that can do this. Not a nickel for it. What you're going to see is you're going to see people saying that the EPA is the enemy of business. Well, guess what? No EPA is doing this kind of measuring I'm doing for you right now. Meaning that this privately funded endeavor called EnviroReporter.com is uh, what you got. This is your marketplace. Feeling good? Feeling comfortable? Well, I am because I know my capabilities and I know my instruments. But I'm not comfortable with the answers that we're getting out of the inspector, which show, once again, quantifiable high amounts of radiation overages. Well, look at this. 681. The last background in here we took was 35.8. This is 68.1, so let's just do a little math. And we find out that this is nearly double background. Once again, a high reading. Thanks for tuning into EnviroReporter.com. Come back often and let us know what you think. Leave us a comment, join us in our chat, send us an email. Thank you.